Anthony, uh, congratulations. Obviously, a uh, great win for the team tonight yeah, and everything. Definitely. Just uh, tell us how you feel about how it all unfolded and obviously getting the win. Yeah, but I had the easiest job tonight. Literally, I was just watching these guys compete. Like, they're cornering themselves so good. Like, you can see the level of the difference of jiu-jitsu. Like, these guys have real game plans, and they understand how to win these matches, man. So, yeah, literally, I just had fun watching. What was the process in, like, selecting your team and just getting that whole side of it done? See, I was in, I was in my season for the PFL, so yeah. I'm like, man, it's hard for me to compete or say I could compete. So I actually hit up uh, Gordon Ryan. I'm like, yo, I need your help, bro. Like, so t point me in the right direction. And he helped me recruit the whole team. So that's a nice option to have. You know, oh, yeah, for sure. I already knew that. You know, I'm like, yo, if we're trying to win this thing, that's where I'm going. Yeah, so what, what do you do with the money? I split it up between my guys. Yeah. So they paid me to be a coach, but I just broke it up between all the little guys, man. And I paid them five hundred dollars for every submission. So, so one guy, big guy, won a thousand dollars, and uh, the last guy uh, won five hundred dollars. I'm surprised you didn't like go to the, you know put it on another fight or try to double it or something. Nah, like that. That, was, <laughs> that was for these guys. We're like to see, to see these guys, you know, happy with the check they just made is awesome, man. And I say that about everybody. Like, if you had to do this sport and provide for your family, like it's for these guys, man, they're they, probably one of the biggest checks they've seen. That's awesome. And just to talk about you a little bit, obviously a few weeks removed from the fight with Stevie, yeah. I think a lot of people were surprised by you know the way it ended. Um, can you just tell us from your perspective what exactly happened with that submission? Man, I made a dumb mistake. You know, I, I initiated that takedown yes. uh, sequence and like I caught him like a uh, single leg, but his knee was in between my legs. And instead of like fighting for the underhook, I let him wizard me hard and take my back. In my head, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna do my spin around and get on top like I always do. But I think I messed up. I posted it like two days before the fight. I was like, it works every time. So dude must have been watching. For sure he was watching because then he adjusted really well with the body triangle. It was, I've just never been in that position. He uh, he had the body triangle kind of modified though. It was more around my, my hips and my, my knee area. So when I went for the turn, I made it, I made it worse on myself by like trying to turn my spine. And then he like went over my head and just there was too much pressure on my rib. And then in that format, I knew I was fighting August 5th. So I'm like, bro, I can't. If this pops, then I'm pretty much done, done. So yeah. yeah. So the injury, it's not like too bad or anything. I saw someone report that. Carter like Yeah. Same thing. I had it in the dust and yeah. fight. Same exact thing. So it's, it's just when a lot of pressure goes on that spot, it's an old injury. It just keeps popping on me. So I, I know better than to expose that. But yeah. like I said, I just got put in a bad position. Is it interesting now that yeah. despite the loss, you're still the number one seed and you get an immediate rematch, right? That's I love kinda it. Like, yeah, Man, I love this PFL for me. I know why. Like, I'm, that's what everybody's. It's, it's part of the hardest you know, form of combat sports is because I got to keep uh, making weight and fighting every like two months. I mean, this, this one's six, six weeks I got in between fights. But um, yeah, I love the format. You know, I get the rematch, and I still have the possibility of becoming a champion. Yeah, what do you think is different about this fight? Like, is it, you've probably never had a rematch this quick before, right? I never had a rematch, and I never had a fight that I was like, yo, I just can't get hurt. I went in that last fight thinking, I'd not, don't get hurt and get the win. Um, and that's just the wrong mindset to have in this sport, man. You can't go out there and play anything safe. Like, I should just went out there and try to kill him. Like, the striking, I was already, I was whooping his ass striking. I, I felt like I was already landing my shots, the body kicks, question mark kick. Um, and I initiated a gun takedown, right? It was like kind of an amateur move on my, on my half. Yeah, and last thing for me, uh, you kind of talked about as you got up, a former opponent of yours, Dal Cerrone, retires last night. Uh, I know you said off camera you were surprised about it, but just yeah. give me some reflections on Cowboy's career and kind of what he meant to you as an opponent, and I know a training partner and a friend. Yeah, man, Cowboy, I mean, at first, first we started off as like, not liking each other. Yeah. I was in the, I came to the UFC, he was calling me out, said I was scared. First fight happened, and I beat him with the body kick, and then, over time, we became friends. So that second fight that happened, we were already friends. You know, like we spent like a whole week together on the USO tour. Uh, we trained together numerous of times, and we were fighting each other. So it's one of them guys, man. Like I look back at my career, I'm like, bro, he's been around since the WC days. Like when I started the WC, he's one of the guys that I was looking up to. I was like, yeah, I want to be in his position. And to see him retire now, man, amazing career. I mean, he's he's done everything you can in the sport, bro. Like one of the guys that fought, fights anybody, and I respect that about him. Yeah. Does it ever make you when you see that guys who are there, you know, right around your time walking away? Does it make you think about your timeline at all, or are you as all in as you've ever been right now. I'm all in, man. I think, um, you know, once you start thinking about retirement, that's when it's time to retire. Like, if, if that thought process goes in your head, like he said it before the fight, you know, if you're already thinking about retiring before the fight, it's probably it's probably time to call it quits. And I mean, for me, I've I've just been so high in this sport so quick, and then the lows happen right with it. And yeah. you know, I'm always trying to scratch my way back. But in this new format, I feel like I'm, I found I kind of found found my my home of training. I feel good where I'm training at. No injuries happening in camp, um, and I'm making it to these fights healthy. Uh, Anthony over here, just uh, real quick on that rematch with Stevie Ray, we know the playoffs are mostly in the UK, but you get the benefit, you're going to be fighting in New York as opposed to going overseas, yeah. is that a big benefit and we're, did you like knowing that you weren't going to be one of the divisions that travels overseas? I didn't know that until we actually at the last fight, but once they announced New York, I've been wanting to fight in New York since Khabib and uh, uh, Conor McGregor thing happened because I, I was supposed to fight Kiesa that fight and he got cut. So I, that was my first fight in New York. But so now I got to fight in New York. So I'm excited about it. And yeah, I, I didn't really want to travel overseas, honestly. It's way better going up to New York and handling business.
Um, and just can you talk a little bit at the benefit of having Daniel on your team? It just felt like, you know what, that was just the anchor. Did you feel that would be the case going into this? Yeah, I think we just matched. We, the way we set up the first round was for that purpose. You know, we, we knew he was going to go out there and get after some missions. I mean, everybody on that mat was a killer. I mean, even though the, the, the lower guys were killers. Uh, but it was just good competition. I mean, Icon came with some studs as well, bro. It was like probably some of the best world-class jiu-jitsu on this mat right here. Thank you. It's 4th of July weekend. How are you and the team going to celebrate this one? Man, honestly, these guys are going back home to train. These guys are killers, bro. These are like, these are guys that do jiu-jitsu and they really do jiu-jitsu. Like, they do training camps. I mean, they're just all about it. Um, I get one more day off for my family before I start camp for uh, August. So, yeah, I'm going to go enjoy, enjoy the fireworks somewhere, probably have some hamburgers and hot dogs and get fat for one more day. <laughs> and uh, you got obviously defend this one. Uh, would you want to participate the next time going yeah, on or just leave the team as is? No, honestly, I would I would love to participate. I just couldn't do it in the season because I now fight in five weeks and my ribs messed up for my last fight. So I didn't want to like have the team not ready. So I just, I made sure I had four killers ready. James Scott, the, James Scott said he didn't know most of the guys on this card. He said it's the most world-class talent in jiu-jitsu he's seen. He didn't know most of the guys. Oliver Taz, on the other hand, is pretty well known in the Jiu Jitsu game. Were you impressed how Bo Nickel held up at the end there? Oh man, definitely. Uh, Bo Nickel's a beast, though. His wrestling background definitely helps with the submission you know, defense. A good wrestler that's hard to submit is a hard guy to beat, man. Um, you know, but the, the, the guys that I had, I could tell like, when, when they were warming up, I was like, oh, this is a different level of Jiu Jitsu. Like, even their warm ups were structured and they were, everything was for a purpose. Do you like the trash talk in Jiu Jitsu or do you like the Jiu Jitsu as the traditional? Respect and loyalty. I mean, I think I think it amps up the fans. As long as it stays respectful after it's over, like you know, you're in a match. You're, even if those jujitsu, you're technically trying to beat up another guy. So I, I feel like the emotions play in there. But I mean, everybody was respectful afterwards. We shook everybody's hand. It was no good competition. Congrats on the win from Team Pettis and the Ultimate Fighter winning. And Team Pettis tonight winning. Yeah. Just for fun, back to back nights for the Undertaker team. Why did you choose that one for your for your walkout? What's that? With the Undertaker theme. Oh, right? that was these guys. These guys chose that, man. <laughs> I, 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 I tell them, whatever you guys want, man, this is your stage. I didn't even want to be up, you know, take any shine away from these guys. Because okay. these guys are for real class jiu-jitsu athletes that are, are training their asses off. And to see better perform right here is dope. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. All right, all good. Thank you. Thank all right, guys. Later.